Swole Benji here. Today we're going to be talking about 15 things that must change for New World to succeed. Number 15, bots. This guy didn't even finish. This one didn't even finish mining the node. He's not even coded correctly. All right, so bots ruin the game because they ruin the economy. Bots run around on a script in massive hordes, just running around gathering everything that they can. All right. This, I've been following this one a bit. He is on rails, like hardcore on rails. Anyway, <laughs> bots, uh, some people like bots because they make things cheaper, but for me, if bots are out gathering every resource in the game, then I have no reason to play. I will not log in. I will not gather resources. I have no reason to chop these trees. I have no reason to go gather fiber or mine iron. That, mi that iron earlier that this guy uh, generously left for me, I have no reason to mine it. Look, he's gonna, he's gonna divert, oh, there he goes, okay. <laughs> I have no reason to mine it because it, the prices are so low because there's thousands of bots every day that just log in and mine everything, all the time, everywhere. And bots, I know, take up a considerable amount, like, player count, okay? Oh, you missed it. Oh, there he goes, yep, you see that? Look, look at this behavior. It's weird, isn't it? It's so weird, I... Yo, I'm gonna mine this one. <laughs> this is not a player, guys. This is not a player. And yes, I know his name is Boomkin, like, you know, World of Warcraft Boomkin, but still, not a player. Hey, hey you, hey, hey, if you if you talk to me, I'll give you money. I'll give you so much money if you can just respond to me. Hello? 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 Are you there? Hello? I will give you so much money, dude. Hey, hello? Are you there? Hello? See, it's a bot. Um, and there's tons of these everywhere. You can just run around in any direction in any part of the game, and you will find so many of these. They're very easy to spot. They have to go. They are ruining the game for players like me. They may not be ruining the game for everybody because, Ugh, my prices are so low, dude. But, like, again, <laughs> look at him. He's beelining towards the, uh, the iron node here. <laughs> this is my iron. Ah. Oh, he missed it. No, he's turning back around. Ah, it's mine now. Let's see. Can he, will he like stand here and try to mine this one? I'm curious. Let's see. Okay, what's he doing? Nope. He is auto detecting the next node to run to. Okay, but yeah, number 15 bots. Sorry, it ruins the game. Number 14 is gear score scaling. Now, this was a huge one because a while back in November, December, they made a patch where your gear score counted exclusively, and yes, I'm still following the bot, your gear score was used for calculating your damage in PvP. And so what that means is that if you shoot someone with a 500 like a gear score rifle, uh, you will deal significantly des less damage than a 600 gear score rifle, which, um, yes, I understand that you will deal less damage anyway, but it's no longer just calculating the damage of the musket and the person's armor. It is calculating the gear score number as well, and will massively scale it down. If, if 500 versus 600 gear score against a 600 gear score opponent is a 450% damage loss compared to using a 600 gear score weapon, even though the damage is... It's only slightly more in the numbers, okay? And now, as of this patch, it is now applies to dungeons. So what this means is, like, look at my gear, right? I have, like, five, 595, 598, 598, but I, these pants are 520. So what this means is that when I'm attacked by a monster in a mutated dungeon because I have 520 gear score pants on, I will take, it's like 300% more damage than if I just have a 598 pant on or whatever. Instead, even though, like, look at this, this is 302 armor, this is, uh, like, 260, like, technically, this, these pants are more armor than these gloves, but because these gloves are higher gear score, they give me more defense versus monsters, which doesn't make any sense, and I lost the bot, I was gonna follow him around just to drive a point, but the point is, is gear, gear score scaling has killed the game, and also, like, it, it's, it's just awful, you should, like, what if I have a niche build where I have all cooldown reduction, and I could spam this, you know, but with 600 gear score, I just have plain boring gear. Well, it's more beneficial to use the 600 gear score plain boring gear with no perks, because that's how the scaling works. And that is not fun, that is not cool. Uh, it's gotta go. Number 13, Outpost Rush Scoring, okay? Outpost Rush is abysmal with its scoring system. For those that don't know, you need a minimum 500 points to even get rewards. So what any person does, because of how awful 
the matchmaking is. You could be like a 12 versus 20 if 32 people on your dead server queue up to actually play it, which you've waited hours to do all day just to get your gypsum orbs, right? So what happens is you're on the team of 12 people, and the people uh, that have queued up with pre-maids uh, are on the team with 20 people, and they just steamroll you, they 3-cap you, and then the match ends in 5 minutes. And in that 5 minutes, if you didn't get 500 points, you don't get a gypsum orb, you don't get a little chest with some crappy items in it that might boost your gear score up. You, you get nothing for the, those hours of being in queue. So what you have to do is you have to kill mobs or t build things in the base which are easily defeatable for points. Now, um, de dealing damage to any enemy players does not give you points, but healing your team does. So what all these botters do is they join and then they just damage each other and then heal up. It's really, really cringe. But it, the scoring system has to change too. Like, if you down someone... You don't get nearly as many points as someone who gets the last hit on a corpse, and I have gotten really good at sniping down to players. There's a there's a science to it. It is one global second worth of time from when you see the death icon to when you can pull the trigger and steal the kill. And stealing the kills is one of the best ways to get points in Outpost Rush other than healing. So what this does currently is it makes everyone go out and farm monsters and build things to get that 500 points, um, and then... It also makes everyone roll healer, right? So, like, sometimes you'll have a team where you're just an army of healers shooting your healing balls at the enemy trying to kill them, right? And uh, those teams do tend to win a lot. But um, the point is, is that the scoring sucks. It needs to change. You should still get rewards even if you aren't able to put in effort, I think, in my opinion. Yes, I know people will AFK if you do that, and it was put in to prevent the AFKers, but how about just having AFK detection or something, or, I don't know, like, a World of Warcraft... I'm not saying, you know, have a report system, because automated bans are a thing in this game, and wow, that was some lag. Look at that guy. He <laughs> that was interesting. Um, not a bot, I don't think, but... Uh, it's just, it's gotta change, it's gotta be fixed. And maybe allow cross-server Outpost Rush. If I queue up right now for Outpost Rush, and it is prime time, this this is the hour where the server is the most full. It will still take me 40 minutes on a merged server that merged last month to find enough people to play with. So, and that sucks. What if, like, this is my favorite thing to do in the game and I have to wait hours to do it? Like... I understand if you go to a theme park and you wait in line for an hour to ride the Harry Potter ride or something, but uh, this is not a theme park, this is a video game, okay? So it, it, fix Outpost Rush, please. Next up is number 12, Dungeon Queuing, okay? The game needs a system where I can open a menu or go to the dungeon's entrance and queue up with a list of people with a list of roles and then form a group that way, okay? And there's a few reasons why. It's very, it's very archaic, and I know there's some purists out there that love this, but going into the chat and then being like, looking for group Lazarus, looking for group mutated dungeon tier 3, right, is a pain in the butt. Okay, if you have, if your mutated dungeon tier is like, above 4, it will, you will take all day to find someone else that's also above 4. It sucks. It is awful. Give us a menu to just click on and then we can see everyone else that's also looking for it because I don't want to sit here and type in the chat all darned day long looking for groups, okay? And even on populated servers, people have this problem. And um, why would someone want a scholar rapier? Uh, whatever. Uh, the point is, you can't... Another thing too is is anxiety. They're, gamers are not social people these days, okay? Now let me tell you about me, right? I'm a very outgoing person. I am not afraid of anyone. I don't care if they judge me. I can stand in front of a crowd of a hundred people at a convention and talk to them and ask cringy questions for memes on YouTube videos, which is what I used to do. Um, <laughs> or, you know, when I was a wagey, I would have to stand in front of a crowd of thousands of people and then deliver to my fellow wagies news about upcoming changes to the retail marketplace that sucked and was awful and everyone hated and I was a guy that had to deliver the news because it made the shareholders happy and the you know the upper echelon of you know the company right and <laughs> and I didn't care I could stand in front I could talk to these people all day even if they're giving me the stink eye if they're mad if they think I'm a troll if they think I'm goofing around it didn't matter to me but in in video games going into the chat and asking to form a group is just, there's something painful about it. There's something just, 
like, I don't want to do it. My body is telling me, no, don't do this. This does not feel good. Stop it. And I know I'm not alone. I am a, I am literally a, I am like one of the fourth biggest YouTubers for this game. And even I have problems finding groups. So if I have a problem finding groups or if I feel anxiety, then there are thousands and thousands of other people that feel and have the same problem as me. And it's your job as the game developers to do something about that. So all you gotta do is add, add a dungeon queue. Let me open a menu and have the game form a party for me where like I can, I can click that I'm a healer and you know, it'll show my gear score expertise or whatever the heck you wanna show. And then other people can be like, uh, oh, this group, you know, just needs two DPS. And then they can click a button and they can join the party or something or request to join the party. I don't know. You guys figure it out. But, um, like, WoW Classic has taught me that I don't, I don't like that system. I don't like having to just spam the chat. Like, that's all the chat is. Invite for Lazarus. I, I can tank her DPS. I'll DPS Laz. Healer Laz. This is... You shouldn't have to do this. This is just extra steps to play the game that you're are, you've already paid for and earned the orbs to play. It sucks. Please fix it. Please change it. Number 11, server transfers. You've got to open or give us server transfers. There are so many people that would just pay money. Right now, they would pay money to just leave their shitty server. Okay? I know as a game dev, you probably don't have the problems that us players have. I, like, a, like I'm going to use the YouTuber card. I'm a famous YouTuber. I'm a pretty big boy in the scene, right? And even I don't want to stay on my server, okay? Now, I have soured too many grapes with scammers because I always call out injustices. I'm that kind of guy. If I see a guy shoplift and I do something about it, I don't just ignore it and look the other way. Same goes for people scamming people in the in-game chats with crafting or people being scummy and all sorts of things, right? So, you know, people like me or people just in general need server transfers or at least name changes. I'm not saying that I would ever change my name. I'm not going to do that. Um, but, uh, people want these things, they need these things to play. Like, right now, I don't want to play with a single person on my server. I don't, there is not a single company on my server that I get along with or vibe well with. There is just, there's no, none of them. Nobody. And you could say that's a me problem, but it's not. I could join, uh, right now, I could go to El Dorado and find plenty of people. I can go to Eden or Olympus and find plenty of people. I can go to Valhalla and have a grand time. But here on this server, not it's not so much the player population, it's just the people on the server. This this used to, the server I'm on, Orofina, it, it was originally a roleplay server. And it, you know the kind of people that join those servers, right? Like, I don't really get along with them. And they don't really want me here. I was forced to merge here with these people. And um, they don't like me. I don't like them. Like, y you know what happened? Like, I tried to join the quote-unquote official Orofina Discord server. And I was immediately banned for being a YouTuber. I know that's kind of like YouTuber discrimination, whatever, right? But uh, the, the point is, is that... Like, they don't want, like, <laughs> like, a lot of these weird control freaky types always try to establish, like, a Reddit server or a Discord server, and then anyone that they don't agree with, uh, politically or just life choices in general, they, they oust, they get rid of them, uh, and I don't think that's cool, so there, there's so many people that would continue to play this game, if you open server transfers, like, right now, I guarantee you, you'd get a huge jump in population that came back to the game, just with that alone. Even with all the bugs and all the glitches and all the anti-fun stuff you guys have been putting out, just getting server transfers opened back up would be huge for the game. Even if you have to pay 20 bucks for it, you know, that's, it's whatever, okay? Like, <laughs> get it done. I know the devs talked about it. I know the devs were like, oh, well, we gotta finish merging first and blah, blah, blah. No, you, you got, what are you doing? Like... <laughs> You're, you're taking months to do this? The game will be dead in months. You don't have months to do this. You need to do this now. You need to you need to get some people working 16-hour shifts every single day. Uh, you know, get a whole team of people, hire up more people. You're in California. You got plenty of smart computer dudes that can figure this out. Just get it done. What is the, what is the rush? Or not the rush. What is the deal? Hurry up. Come on now. Chop, chop. I know not a lot of people realize this, but companies have too darned much money in this game okay especially before merges because like the server i'm on was merged with like six other servers and those other servers all had one to two companies that dominated the whole map and they all got to collect all the taxes and so there are literal like servers are filled with elon musk's and jeff bezos's okay and bill gates's 
I'm not kidding. That's how it feels. Like, I'm just a normal little, like, low-end wagey. I go farm the fiber, I go farm the iron, and all the bots drive the prices down to nothing. But the governors have millions of gold generated weekly. And, like, you can look at it in the governor's desk. You open the governor's desk, and look at this. For 583,000... It's literally gold cap. There, there, there is a guy. This is just one town out of eleven. Okay, and uh, whoever, own, whoever Virginia Company is, is getting five hundred thousand right now. And th this is, this is the start of the week. Okay, this is not like the end of the week. Okay, um, <laughs> and yes, they do have to pay upkeep. What do you do? It's a fraction. It's free money. They didn't have to go out and farm twenty hours a day to make that. For me to make that amount of coins, you know how long I would have to play. Uh, I think the the world record right now for gold earning for a solo player, and all they did was chest runs using a luck set, was like 1 million coins in 30 days played. That's days played. My slash played is 42 days slash played, okay? And I've, I've maybe got a half of that from my entire time playing. I know I'm, I'm only spouting 137k right now. I do spend a lot of it, but I do have a lot in storage as well. And that is not cool because, you know, like, yeah, the company, oh, well, they earned it, right? They earned it. No, they, they didn't earn it. They just had a bunch of people that let them take over a territory and then they hold it for a week and then they're just rich. And, like, <laughs> the people that I used to play with, they, they have millions and millions and millions of gold and those people can just hand it out. They could buy favors. They can gear out all of their close friends. They can buy out entire commodities on the market and then just never relist them and just store them forever if they wanted. It's it's too much. No one should... I, I, I know this is like some anti-work bullshit, but like... Uh, which anti-work is not bullshit, but... Um, y no one should have that much money in a game, okay? Like one or, or a few individuals or just even a small collection of individuals should not be that wealthy, okay? There is no reason for it that is super imbalanced. A, a solo player like me or even a small group posse of players will never be able to achieve that amount of money and is completely imbalanced. And once these guys begin to quit the game and suicide their gold, they are going to buy out the entire market and, and ruin the market for everyone else, okay? This is something that I have legitimately done in Cataclysm in World of Warcraft. I was able to control the entire market because I had more money than everyone else. And I used add-ons that I had made myself in order to do that, and I was able to just run add-ons and scripts in the, the auction house in World of Warcraft all day, and it, it just <laughs> it made everyone's life miserable. And now this game has that too, okay? Uh, so they, it, you've got to change it. You've got to make it where uh, companies receive tokens and not spendable money. And those tokens are used to upgrade benches. And you know what? The company should have to go out in PvP to earn these tokens. They should have to go out and do something, right? You know how, like, in real life, the government actually has to do, do things to earn your tax dollars? Maybe. I don't know. Depends on your country, right? But, um, like, the, the governors in this game don't have to do anything. They just have to hold their territory in a, in a 50v50 war. That's it. That's all they gotta do. They don't have to go out and, and like pay money to build roads and things. Yeah, they build the, the, the crafting stations, and then they r fix them up whenever they get destroyed in an invasion. But that's about it. The, the companies are too rich. Something has to change. Take away their richness. Take away their power. Give them more gold sinks. Don't give the players more gold sinks. Number nine, stop nerfing fun. I am sick of every time I log in, every time there's a patch, it is less fun than the patch before it. And let me just give one example that my viewers have told me about, because I wasn't even in the know. You know how I've made several guides on this perk ability called Trenchant Recovery? So, fully charged heavy attacks, attacks with an S, deal, heal the player for 28% of the damage dealt, right? So that reads as in, if I do this, this big heavy axe cleave attack, which is fun to do on mobs, because you're hitting multiple people, and you see the numbers fly off the screen, that's going to hit like, like five dudes in front of me, right? And the way that skill reads is that it will heal me for every time I hit them, okay? But there was a stealth nerf to it because the devs do watch my videos and the devs do hate that I break their game by allowing players to solo things like Mangled Heights, which is up here in great... Um, yes, I'm letting the mobs hit me like, here, here, like, here's Mangled Heights, right? Uh, Mangled Pox Gated, so on and so forth, right? You can go here and solo this whole thing with this perk where you just cleave down everything and you heal 
28% of the damage you deal, like, I just did 3,700 to that mob. So 28% of that would be like 7,800 times 5. Well, that's like four to 5,000 HP healed in one swing. Yes, I know it's a little game breaking. I didn't make the perp. You did, devs. Stop nerfing it. And if you're going to nerf it, tell people in advance about it. Because uh, there's Reddit stories of someone who spent hundreds of thousands to make the perfect axe based on, on you know, a build that I've put out. And and now that you stealth nerfed it, the, the he just wasted his money. It's just it's gone. There's no compensation for it. And it's not just, this is not the first time you've nerfed fun, okay? Um, even in the betas, I made a video where you can use campfires to death warp around. That was fun. That was cool. That was like a strategy. And now you made it where campfires only work within 500 meters. Yes, I'm aware that it, it kind of hinders player movement a bit, but that that's taking away fun. Remember when fishing uh, chests gave gold? Oops, the bots came in instead of banning the bots. Um, which, uh, I forgot to talk about bots. You should hire some game masters, like, just get four of them to run around in the game world at 20,000% increased speed, and when they see a bot, they, they nuke them. Just right there, just blam, they're dead, they're gone. Okay, I've game mastered for two separate games, okay, and I can tell you right now that that's how I did it, and I could completely eradicate all the bots on a server in just a few hours a day, on a huge server maybe, and on smaller servers maybe like 10 to 20 minutes. I, I would, and then once I've cleared out all the bots, they stop coming back and the, those that do come back, well tomorrow's workday is even shorter because I would log in and I would go to all the popular botting spots and if I saw bots or bots being created on low level characters to be built back up or whatever, or maybe players that have sold their accounts to bots, botting companies, you know, I would run around and d detect them, and then so on and so forth, and deal with it. And, uh, it, it was simple. It was manually done. Yes, I know that you want to, like, program the game to where you can detect a bot uh, automatically by stepping in an area and how they behave and how they move around. And that's all good and stuff. Uh, but you need to pay some game masters to just have some boots on the ground and do the dirty work of getting rid of the bots, okay? It, it, you wouldn't have to even do it full-time. Once you get most of the bots gone, you can just, you know, retire three of them or change their positions, have one game master that logs in and, and does it, like, one hour a day, you know, five days a week, and that would be more than enough to keep the bot population gone, okay? Uh, but it's, you just gotta stop nerfing fun, okay? Uh, there's so many fun things in this game that have been nerfed, and they continue to be nerfed, and I'm, we're sick of it. It's like you don't want us to play your game anymore, and a lot of us haven't. A lot of people have quit. There's just nothing fun to do anymore. Number eight, unified cooldown resets. Now, this is not something that I so much have a problem with, because I don't play games around dailies. I don't play games around cooldowns. I play games to, to do a, a thing that I want to do. Right now, I'm running around killing animals and not skinning them because the bots have that covered for me. But the point is, is a lot of people are sick of having cooldowns just be all over the place, right? A lot of people want to put, you know, turn in their gypsums uh, into casks and have it reset at the same time every day because a lot of people have varied lifestyles. When I was a wagey, I would have to work mornings, I would have to work nights, maybe midday shifts, maybe a close open. Right? I didn't have time to, like, have to... It, it would suck if I got off work, and then by the time that my cooldowns were up, I would have to be going back to work. I would hate that. That would drive me insane. I wouldn't play this game if I was still a wagey, right? Uh, but a lot of people have family, or maybe they, li they like to go out or go vacationing or not play... Or do something else with their life. And in that case, those people, they really need cooldowns to reset at the same time every day. And what this does, too, is um, this also... Why is that bush moving weird? Uh, this builds a sense of urgency where it's like, oh no, everything resets in two hours. Hurry up, get on, and get it done, right? Ah, someone's talking. Oh, go away. That was weird. Um, why do you, why can I hear them from so far away? Hello, good sir! Hello! Woo! Anyway, you gotta have unified cooldowns. Um, their microphone was really loud too. I wonder if mine was loud. If you have unified cooldowns, it would be pretty easy to implement, hopefully, without breaking the game. I don't know. I don't, I don't code. I know every time you guys implement something, it breaks something else. But whatever. Fix it. Deal with it. Figure it out. Number seven. Incentivize world PvP and not instance wars. Now, this was the biggest population killer of the game. And I know some people might agree with me, but the crew that I rolled with and the people that I played with 
This is the reason they started to play this game. The reason that I started to play this game was one, voice chat, where I can be like, hello, hello, hello. And the other reason is because I could gank people. If I could not run around the world and murder people, I would not play this game. Even though it's really fun to chomp trees and kill animals and mine st stuff. You know, that's not enough, okay? All of that, ha everything, every action you do in a game like this is to PvP better or more efficiently, okay? But, when this game first came out, we would roam in, in zergs of like 200 players, flagged up doing the faction missions, and we would encounter other f companies doing the same thing with hundreds of players, and we would like just be out in the middle of a field here, and we would see a whole bunch of enemy teams, and we'd be on Discord and be like, okay guys, yo, if look at the compass at 120 southeast, uh, there's, uh, there's about 40 players, yo guys, okay, form up, and then our musket team would like form a line, and then we would all point the muskets at their line, and we would just start shooting, our great axe guys would be charging in, throwing the grav wells, our hammer guys would be busting balls, it was, it was fun, it was was, that wolf died to grab well it was really cool it was like we were in the colonial days and we just saw the enemy in the spooky forest and then our uh, our, our uh, what is it raid leader shoutcaster I forget the name what it, whatever it's called um, would be like okay we need line of sight chop down the trees and we would there would be like a hundred of us all just chopping down the trees all at once it was so cool so that our musket people could see people hiding behind trees and stuff right and we would have, like, a, a scout team that would run ahead and check the bushes for people. Like, we would have teams that would just run up and start smashing into bushes. And it was so fun and so cool. But what ended up happening is, once people learned the game and they learned the meta, they realized that you don't get anything for that other than fun. Uh, and if you're the smaller Zerg or the lesser geared Zerg, you, will, you were going to die and you would have a repair bill. So what ended up happening was... Zergs started avoiding each other. So, like, say, uh, like, my team, uh, we're in Monarch's Bluff and we're pushing it to send it to war because we want to own Monarch's Bluff because we like the houses there or whatever, right? Um, we just like the name or the location. So we would push it into war, and then the team that's there would not defend it because it was a waste of time to defend it. It was a huge hassle to have to kill us out in the open field while we did our PvP missions. So what they did instead is they just let us push it to war, and then they get 50 of their biggest Chad geared, you know, no lifers, throw them in the war, and then bug abuse. And then they could either hold the territory or we could, um, you know, spam Great Axe and heavy armor healers. That that was our comp. We, we ran all Great Axe and all healers, and we would just smash everything because we would just, like, throw 30 grav wells into a capture point and then run up and spin everybody and then they would die immediately. Uh, and we had a few spellcasters too, of course, but the point is, is that, like, PvP was, open world PvP was never pushed, it was never a thing, and once this new meta surfaced, because that's how the game was played, there was no point to world PvP anymore in big open zergy groups, okay? And yes, I'm aware that, uh, I don't have many videos on my channel about that, because it wasn't a searchable term, People really didn't seem interested in it for YouTube purposes, so so I didn't really cover it much. But it was the most fun that you could possibly have in this game, and there has been nothing like it since, okay? This was like like late September, early October when the meta was formed, and then it just stopped, okay? And, uh, and now all you do is you chop trees and you kill animals, and then the bots undercut you, and it sucks. Uh, but yeah, you've got to find a way to incentivize world PvP, you know? Like... I, what I'm hoping is that they pull an Albion online in these new zones, like right up here, and maybe this new zone, like right up here, are PvP forced zones, where if you want to go to them, they will have higher tier gear, where you can just find like 620 items, or maybe 700 items, or whatever, and um, you have to be flagged to do it, you know, and maybe, just maybe, make it full loot... I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I, I don't have high hopes for that, but that's what this game used to be in the alphas, and it was so fun. It was so cool. Uh, it was like a Rust, but medieval and with magic, which I wish Rust would have continued that game. And let's just squish the turkey here and squish. Okay, so anyway, that's number seven. You got to find a way to incentivize World PvP because um, people are going to leave if there isn't. Number six, revoke the crafting leveling crawl. Now... When you want to level your skills beyond, like, 150, you have to use in-game things. Like, if I want to level weaponsmithing from 150 to 200, I have to craft Aura Calcum weapons. 
Not a million wooden bows or whatever the heck, right? Which bows is actually engineering, but you get the point. You have to craft the high-level stuff to level it up from 150 to 200. And that wasn't always the case. They made crafting so, so much harder, and anyone that got that maxed out, which was a legacy thing, beforehand saved so much resources, so much time, so much money. I, I, I get that the devs... I don't even know what I sold. I don't even have anything listed. What the hell? And people can't send gold anymore. What What was that? Um, is that just stuck in the pipes? Anyway, you, you can't... You, you gotta revoke it, you gotta change it, you gotta make it easier. I have no reason to ever push weaponsmithing to 200 because everyone else has either already done it through all the multi-millions that their companies has, or, um, like, I just don't need to craft anything because I can just find it on the market, which, it's whatever, right? But, I, I want to, I want to log into this game and work towards it, but it's such an impossible number. I would need 86 thousand oracalcum ingots which is not something even me with no life that can play 20 hours a day even if there was no bots hogging all the oracalcum nodes it is not something i would ever grind out ever i would never grind that out and yes i could buy the materials with my vast riches here uh which i could grind out separately and, and then what like i i just whoa there's like a little hole here look at that little hidey hole hmm, i wonder what's in there that's interesting right uh, I don't think we can jump in there, but, uh, you can't really crawl either. Maybe I can glitch in there. Anyway, um, <laughs> you, you gotta fix the- just- just change it back to the old ways. Well, I am now stuck? Alright, well, I am stuck in a hole. <laughs> Yay! Um, fix- fix this stuff, too. Um, anyway, that is number- what is that, number six? Guys, fi please fix it. <laughs> I'm stuck in a hole. <laughs> Number five, fix the customer service and automated bans. You, this has to be fixed, okay? If you've ever put in a ticket to Amazon, and let me tell you, I've done an experiment where, I, where I've sent over, right now it's 1,600 tickets. Yes, that's right. I have literally spammed their ticketing service, and they can ban me if they want. I don't really care at this point. Uh, but the po the thing is, out of 1,000... Ooh, Emerald Gypsum. Uh, out of 1,600 tickets, I've always asked in my tickets... Uh, ooh, Morningdale just got owned. Uh, anyway, I'll stop getting distracted by the game here. Out of 1,600 tickets, I always put in a question to verify that the other person is human. Well, I ask a question like, what color is the sky, or, um, is grass green, or is it yellow, or, you know, just so something simple. And I've only ever received one actual human response out of 1,600 tickets. A lot of the responses from the tickets I've sent in were just automated things about uh, Amazon stuff that made no sense to, to what the ticket was about. And one ticket I put in got me a temporary ban. I wasn't mean, I wasn't being like spiteful or anything in the ticket. I just simply asked that my needler, which is a sword in the game, not like a sexual innuendo thing, was bugged. Here's a screenshot of what the perk should have and what the weapon currently has. And that was a three-day ban. Like, what? I reported a bug and asked for it to be corrected. You know, just have a Game Master, you know, beam me in a weapon with the right perks. It didn't have to be named Needler. It just needed the right gear score and the right perks and stats. Uh, or to refund the crafting materials. And they just banned me for three days. Like, what? And not only that, but the mass reports... Mass reports can get people banned, and I know Amazon just, left and right, they will say, oh, every report is manual. No, it's not. There is so much proof on the forums, on the Steam forums, on Reddit, on everywhere, that it is automated bans, and that is unacceptable. And yes, I know games like Blizzard does it too, okay? Um, there was a guy that I know that got, in the current iteration of World of Warcraft, he was banned for 10 days because... Uh, he joined, like, an arena, and he said, no heals, period, and then he said, GG, though. And apparently that was worth a 10-day ban, and it's just an automated ban, it's just ridiculous, it's just, uh, like, you can just have a big Zerg company and mass report people. If I ever talk crap about bots in the chat, you know what happens? All the botters that are monitoring their bots mass report me. Okay, I am on the botters blacklist. Because I am anti-bot. And you know what the bots do? They mass report me a lot. Now, luckily for me, I'm a, I'm a flagged content creator for the game. 
So um, I do have a person that helps me out with that, but um, not everyone has that. Like if you aren't a content creator, I guess you're just a second class gamer. You don't get a little specialized content creator agent that helps you through getting mass reported and all the time, right? Um, but even then, like, even if you do contact the, the creator program people, they just ghost you or they just pass you along to the regular customer service that just hits their macro. And I've actually, the thing with the, the game masters of, of this game, or like when you put in a support ticket and you get an Amazon rep, you know, that sends you an automated message, they tend to use their full name. And if you, I'm not saying to do this, but you, you can look some of them up. They have LinkedIn profiles, you know. And then you contact them, you know, outside of the game via email or Facebook or whatever and have a chat with them. And they will tell you how the game works. They're like, yeah, I, I work for Amazon uh, for, for the game thing. Because they handle things. They don't just handle the game stuff, right? They handle all the other Amazon things as well. So they just hit their automated buttons that their little screen prompts them to do. And then they move on. They don't actually, they can't even, like, if you get reported for, like, abusive chat, they cannot see what you said. Okay, and we and me and people that I've played with have proven this. We have massively, massively tested this with their accounts, not so much mine, uh, because I gotta be a good boy. But their accounts and what they have done is they have said the most hateful possible things in the game's chat. The worst heinous things that you could possibly say that would merit permanent bans. And you know what happened to them? They, they got the same amount of suspension time as someone using preschooler insults or just stupid things but other also and other people on reddit have reported permanent bans for saying like fart okay a lot of the people that run the amazon ticketing service uh they are not from a country who speaks english normally so they might think that the word fart is as worse for us as the word like uh that australians use for friendly banter okay that starts with the c and kind of sounds like runt Okay, um, YouTube really hates that word, so I'm not gonna say it. That is like, never say that word. It is, uh, it is the, the CEO's least favorite word ever. So you, you never piss off Susan, okay? You never piss Susan off. Never say the C word on YouTube. But the, <laughs> ooh, haste. Okay, so you gotta fix customer service and you gotta fix the automated bans, okay? And I know you can't moderate everyone, but you know what? People should be banned that are innocent, and I'm going to tell you right now, more people that are innocent are being banned than people that are guilty. A lot of people will disagree with me on number four, but the pay model has to change, and it has to go one of two ways. The game is in a dying state. The player count is down. And I'm going to talk real quick about something that happened in the past. All right, so at some point, you were able to family share this game, and what that is, is on Steam, you can have multiple accounts where you click on family share, which could just be your own accounts, and I guess your your own family, whatever, right? And those accounts would have access to your games. So what people were doing was they would buy the game once, or, as it turns out, these hackers were just sending verification codes through Amazon's pipeline, which they would send back a verified code that would allow them to technically be able to create characters on a pirated copy but whatever the point is is that these people that use the family sharing were all <laughs> that guy's name is old janitor <laughs> Janny's clean it up Janny clean it up <laughs> anyway had to do that the point is is that people that did family sharing were they all received a gifted copy of the game from Amazon they all got a $50 game, possibly 10 times, possibly 100 times. Now, family sharing is limited to 10 accounts, but there's a way around that. And I'm not going to tell you how, uh, because I don't really remember how anymore. But it's still possible, especially from people uh, that I talk to on the reg. They, they do it all the time for refunding crappy indie games. But the point is, is that all of these people, all of these botters, all of these gold spammers, all of these dupers all received multiple free copies of the game. And you know what you and I got? We got jack shit. We didn't get nothing. We didn't get a free copy of the game. As a content creator, as a the fourth biggest YouTuber for the game, most games will give something like me free copies to hand out to fans or do giveaways or anything of the sort. But Amazon has done nothing like that. And the point that I'm getting at is that we need to change the pay model. So to get the population back in check, 
and a lot of people disagree with this one, the game needs to go free to play with premium incentives, okay? So let me talk about premium incentives for people that have never played a game like Albion Online or Arc Age or any of those kind of things. Okay, so I'm gonna chop the tree, right? Uh, so right now I got 15 green wood and 73 logging XP, right? So what if you could be free to play with the same gear and same levels as me, and when you chop the tree, you only get four to five wood instead, okay? Or maybe two to three wood, like significantly less, okay? And to get premium access, you would have to either pay like $10 a month or maybe pay um, 10,000 in-game coins every week or something. I don't know. You would have to figure out the gold sink, um, something like that, right? Albion has that system. I think it's really good and it incentivizes a lot, a lot of players to play and to grind and it's a great gold sink for the economy, right? It, like, I would be out here chopping trees to get my premium, you know, active, right? And so would a lot of people. Uh, and yes, I know free-to-play would enable more bots, but hey, that's Amazon's job to get rid of the bots and detect the bots and hire Game Masters to have boots on the ground banning the bots. Okay. But if you change the pay model to something like that, you will have significantly more people playing the game. There are so many people that want to play this. They've heard bad things. They've heard the bad press. They don't want to sink 60 to $40, depending on their location in the world, into the game. Uh, there, there are people in Venezuela that would love to play this, but their economy is just awful. Like, there, there's a bunch of them I talk to, and, and they make the equivalent to, like, $100 a month, and they work 20 hours a day. Uh, and for them to spend $60 on a game is just... It's not in the budget. They can't do it. They will never be able to do it. They will never be able to afford a game like this. And, um, and that brings me to the other pay model recommendation. Uh, which would also help eliminate bots, is to basically a subscription. If you want to keep playing New World, um, instead of making it buy to play, like the people that bought in to play it, let them have a legacy account or something. I don't know. But, uh, you know, just make it like five to ten bucks a month. Or, here's the thing, make it require Amazon Prime. You guys love Amazon Prime. Just make people have a subscription to Amazon Prime and they can play the game, okay? Uh, or they can buy the game without Amazon Prime. There you go. There is so many people that use Amazon Prime for groceries and crap that um, they might check out the game. It's like, hey, you, you just send out a freaking email to all your Amazon Prime subscribers. Hey, did you know that you could be playing New World for free if you have Amazon Prime? You know, and then what happens is you get this god mode character with this, you know, shiny bald head and all this cool gear. And then your Amazon Prime runs out and then you're like, oh crap, I can't play until I renew my Amazon Prime or I could buy the game. So either way, you, the devs, would win. Okay, I'm level 60 and I can't one shot a level 24 from the back with a crit. Fuck this shit. This is stupid. Even if I do it like, yes, if I do a heavy smash, it'll die. I know. Ah, oh, this fucking game. Change your pay model, and you'll get more people, okay? And it'll be healthier for the game's ecosystem. Number three, buff the town boards. After hitting 60, I have never touched the town board ever again. Town boards should give more gold, more gypsum, more town rep at level 60. Maybe it should give PvP faction points. Maybe if you um, go kill 10 wolves at level 60 on a town board quest, maybe... The game could give you 30, like, um, wolves worth of drops or something. I don't know, but I have no reason to do a town board quest at all, ever. Yes, it raises town reputation. You know what also raises town reputation? Just mass crafting some cheap shit. I don't need to go and spend a bunch of times or a bunch of time doing a town board quest. Is this a bot? The hey, man, what's up, dude? You a real person? Like, squat up and down or jump if you're real. No? Okay, cool, you're a bot. <laughs> you see them? How we kind of like... They have this weird behavior. But guys, buff the town boards. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this subject, but I do have a new guy to follow around. Oh, he's getting the berries. Oh, oh, yeah, get the berries, dude. Uh, uh, this is actually number two. I forgot to type it in properly. But expertise should not hinder purchased gear. So let me tell talk about that, okay? I have over a thousand hours played in this game. I have consistently played, and I do things that I find fun. I go gather, I go PvP, I don't do endless Merc Guard runs, I don't do endless Genesis and Lazarus runs, okay? 
I play the actual game, and you know what happens? Guess what? The latest patch, look at this. If I wanted to buy this amulet from this lad here, that is a 600 gear score amulet, it scales it down to 551 gear score, okay? Which means I don't get the 25 dexterity, I only get 22 dexterity, I also lose points on refreshing ward and divine and luck. And by the way, for those that don't know, that have made it this far in the video, divine, which says 9.1% more health from all, all, incoming health effects. That is wrong. Divine only works on single target spells. And what I mean by that is the only thing that is single target in this entire game is Light's Embrace and Divine Embrace. No other healing spell effect or ability in the game works with Divine. It is a complete wasted perk on your amulet, and the developers on the forums have said this is intentional. Okay, but back to the point. Expertise should not hinder purchased gear ever. If I wanted to buy this from the market, this amulet, I should not have to wear a shittier version of it just because I didn't go out and craft a million amulets or because I didn't go dumpster diving in Mertgard for months on end, okay? Now, I understand expertise helps you find stuff of higher quality and higher gear score. To me, that is fine. Some guy that raids dusty old tombs all day, opening chests... He is more likely to find something than little old me who runs around in the fields picking cotton and mining iron. That is completely understandable and fine. I, I am okay with that system. I am not okay with trying to buy this rapier here and having it scaled down to 568, which if you don't know, which I covered earlier in the video, having lower gear score heavily severely hinders your PvP and PvE performance in dungeons. So if I attacked a player with 520 gear score musket and he had 600 gear score gear, regardless of how much defense it has, I'm doing 400% less damage than if I had a 600 gear score weapon. And it's not based on just the armor or the weapon damage and all that ca normal calculations in a video game. It is based on an arbitrary number next to your freaking gear, okay? It it's stupid. This has to be fixed, okay? T like, this is an I quit moment for me. I, I have to, I have made a big stink about this, that the fact that I have to go out and spend tons of time to crank up my gear score, expertise to 600, to be able to use something that I can buy off another player, is ridiculous. It's stupid. You know, let me just go kill thousands of mobs to raise expertise with a weapon or something. Uh, it, like every other game, this is dumb. It's ugh. And now we're at number one out of this long video. Content must release faster, okay? I don't know how hard Lumberyard is to use, but change it if it's too hard to use. Change it, because it's taking you guys way too long to push content out on, into the game. The Turkey Lawn was late. It was, it was released in December, right? And um, yes, I know that you guys kind of like last minute changed it where, oh, Turkey Lawn is getting revenge for all the dead turkeys, bro. Ooh, bags of juniper berries. All right. Uh, but uh, the, the Christmas thing lasted until the end of January? That's like, okay, sure, whatever. Look, man, you've released how many weapons since the game has been out? Okay, in beta, you introduced the Great Axe, and you introduced, um, I think, one other weapon. I already forgot, but ever since the game's launch, there's been one weapon added, the Void Gauntlet, Okay. So, I know players are desperately waiting on the, uh, the pistol thing, what is it, the, I forget the name of it, but it, it's basically, it, it's basically a pistol, um, again, I forgot the name, uh, daggers, okay, daggers were kind of meh whenever I fucked around with them, and I didn't, I never signed an NDA, you can't flag me down, I never signed that NDA, and you still let me play, uh, great sword, Great swords, whatever. Okay, great sword. People are looking forward to that. When are we gonna see these weapons in like late November? What about the um the Angry Earth staff? When is that coming out? I don't even know if that's been data mined yet. I have no idea if anyone's reached that level of data mining. But um, that's a cool weapon. I have a whole set ready for that weapon as soon as it comes out. Uh, assuming it still works the way it did in alpha testing. But uh, we may never see that weapon. Uh, what about using shields with hatchets? That used to be a thing. Remember that? Because um, <laughs> I still have some shields ready to go as soon as that gets enabled. 
there's so like con content needs to be pushed out faster. Uh, even glitching out of these zones and looking uh, like like uh, the the next zone is gonna have uh, ancients dressed as Romans, and it's gonna address that the Romans were on the island for quite a while now. Uh, so that's cool, but when is that coming out? Possibly August or September? Bro, everyone's gonna quit and play something else by then. If you release content too slowly, then you, no one's gonna stick around, okay? Uh, I, I know it takes time to, to you know, animate and, and design zones and to make dungeons and stuff, but, um, it, your, your art team is phenomenal and, and your sound team is just as good. Those guys can crank out so many new variants of animals... You know, like, there, there's so much stuff y'all can do, and you have the funds and the manpower to do it. You just gotta stop taking those water cooler breaks, man. Like, like I don't know if the things have changed in the Amazon offices, but everyone was very just... They weren't working. They were just kind of chilling. They were having a grand old time. They were basically shitting the clock. They were just... Can I crawl in this hole? Uh, they were just chilling. They were just chilling, you know, drinking their coffees, eating their food in, in their little cubicles, and... No one was actually, like, doing work, okay? Maybe, maybe maybe when you had guests over, you weren't allowed to show the work, or you weren't allowed to, like, actually be doing any kind of coding or little, uh, you know, art stuffs. But whatever. Content has to come out faster. You gotta pump it out faster. The people are leaving in droves because they're bored. Like, yeah, as soon as you release the, the little pistol weapons... I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go to the elite zones, level those suckers to 20 in, like, the first day. People are gonna mass craft them up, get their expertise maxed out literally instantly with all the stuff they have saved up. And, uh, it's, yeah, it's not gonna take long. Sure, people are consuming the content faster than you make it, and that's completely fine. But, what that does is that when I get bored and I wanna go play shoot 'em up, because the pistols are cool. The pistols are run and gun, okay? It's not like, 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 say I wanted to kill this wolf here. I know this is, I don't, I never signed an NDA. I'm going to remind you right now, I never signed that NDA. If I want to kill this, this wolf, I have to run up to it and swing at it and kill it. Or I have to run up, point a musket at it and blow it away. But with the pistols, I can just, I can just like, uh, gangster mode it, right? Like, let's pretend this, uh, earth spine is, is a wolf. I can just be like, bang, bang, and it's dead. And I can run over here and be like, bang, bang, and it's dead. And then I can run over here and bang, bang, it's dead. Bang, bang, kill the rabbit. Bang, 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 bang. And, uh, yeah. I don't know if that's going to change or get nerfed or what. Uh, is that more juniper beer? It is. Uh... But it's it's cool. So more weapons like that, just more variety of weapons. This is the only MMORPG with the least amount of skills available to the player, okay? Um, yeah, you, you gotta release more content. You gotta release more stuff to do because players are bored. And stop doing stupid time-gated things like, oh, drink this topaz thing and then go farm a gypsum. That's not fun. That's not cool. You just AoE down those mobs anyway. There, like, I need to go out and... I know you're adding battle arenas, 2v2, 3v3. That's cool. I don't know if you're doing 1v1. I forget. I, I didn't pay attention in class. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but more content. Hurry it up. Chop, chop. Let's go. Come on now. Stop breaking the game. Release more content. Let's go. Open transfers. I'm so Benji. Thanks for watching. I know I haven't been releasing a bit a day because I kind of got lazy. Uh, but this game just makes me depressed now. It's... <laughs> I'm sorry to say that, but you gotta, you gotta fix it. Fix the damn game, okay? I want to go back to the glory days of October when the game had 900,000 concurrent players and people were actually watching videos. Guys, I had a video hit number one on New World searches, okay? And what I mean by that is that if you typed in New World into YouTube, my video was the first thing displayed. And if you typed in New World Mutated Dungeons, New World Mutation, Mutated Dungeons, so on and so forth... All of those search terms hit number one on the ranking. And you know how many vid views it got on, like, the first couple of days? It only got 9,000. That's a dead game. That is an absolute dead game. 20,000 active player dead game. Okay, I know the player count's, like, 50 to 60k. That's all bots. It's all bots. Fix the bots. Get rid of the bots. I know your shareholders won't be happy. I know the player count peoples like me won't be happy with the player count, but it's the real player count. And if you get rid of the bots, more people like me will come back into the game and farm things. We're sick of the bots. We're sick of the companies owning millions of gold and making us second class citizens in the game. We're sick of being stuck on servers with weirdos that uh, dye their hair pink. Okay.
No more. I'm sick of it. I'll just go play Yu-Gi-Oh or something if it continues. You have to fix the game. You Like, why do you think I'm compelled to make this video? It's not because I'm trying to get clicks. It's not because I'm trying to get, you know, stir up controversy or anything. I genuinely care about the game and rely on the game so I don't starve to death in real life and die. Okay, so it's in my best interest for the game to succeed and survive. Which is what I'm hoping to spur someone that's forced to watch my videos at Amazon. Because I know there's a guy. I know. Hey, you. Hey, you that's forced to watch my videos. Please. I hope you get paid well, man. I hope, you're, I hope your day's doing okay, man. I'm sorry that you have to sit here and listen to some someone like me just, just flip out on your game, man. I know. I know it sucks. But it has to be done. I'm sure your job is very important as well. And um, I, can you, like, maybe like relish a little bit of things in your reports like oh today soul benji made a video about duping arrows but um it's just a game mechanic lol xd you know something like that don't be like oh my god he just exposed a dupe method for arrows fix it now every single thing i've ever made you guys fix so damn fast like i swear you have people that monitor my movements in the game when i found out the speed glitch and stuff and i never told a soul about those but i haven't told a soul about three working dupes uh, another speed glitch, um, a glitch how to like get into anything, right? Like I can just I can just glitch into here. Oh, did y'all fix it? All oh, right, no, I don't have the right equipment on. But yeah, you you still just glitch into things super easy, and you can still kind of do it with the fishing pole trick. Where um, uh, for those who don't know, you get under something and then um, and yeah, this is this one's for you, bro. Like if I assuming I could climb under the stairs, I wouldn't be able to stand up. But if I hit my fishing pole hotkey, it'll pull out the fishing pole, forcing me to stand up, and which allows you to get into almost any mountain that you can get under. Okay. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. I'm so busy. Thanks for watching. As always, be a bro and stay swole. Make sure you like the video. I put a lot of work into this one. Uh, and yes, I know it's a long one, but you guys like the long ones. Apparently, leave comments letting me know what needs to be fixed in the game because the devs do read my comment section. So if you want a developer to read your comment, please put something, you know, some, something worth reading down there. Okay, guys, and I'll see you next time. Let me know what else you want me to play. This game's getting me kind of depressed. Take care.